gave the little wink. <laughs> Great, the running time is perfect. With rhythm like that, the show's got to be a success. And with that gruesome female impersonation number of yours, Bumpy, oh, it'll be sensational. Sam, while we pass out the compliment, no one is going to call you the Grand Slammer Rhythm. Boy, you are perfect. Give that man a bow. <laughs> and Jim, what's your setup? I think it's only fair that we should know what it's all about. Well, Harry's meeting Madame Deborah at the stake. She's willing to put up half the money if we put up the other half. Well, who's that man coming from Chicago? That's our other half. Uh, Mr. Cummings by name. Oh, it'll be colossal. It'll be sensational. Oh. It don't go any further, I understand. I she do. wasn't on that train. Or the following one either. And she won't be on the next one. Now, wait a minute. You know your pappy's always taken care of. Yeah. Now, go back to your rooms and relax. I'll see you all at the rent party this evening. Come on, don't worry about it. Everything's under control. So long, I'll see you later. Silent. Boy, was that a deal. Let me have one of those. I really need it. Man, oh man, the jinx is really with us. You're not kidding. Looks like blue skies, and then this dame takes a run out. What's more, the rent's due for the entire cat. Yeah, and we haven't got a dollar among the whole outfit. Well, that's Donaldson, the landlord's worry. Well, what are we going to tell Cummings when he arrives? Never mind Cummings. And anyway, you'll get as good as that. And to make matters worse, Cummings is bringing his two daughters with him. But can't you wire him not to come? How can I do that? They're already on their way here. Look at the position I'm in. The last show I produced in Chicago was a flop. And I met this Mr. Cummings, and I fell for his daughter, Cristola. I told him I was a big shot producer. I sold him a bill of goods. Well, I... And he said any time I had half the money, he'd put up the other half. So I advertised for the other half. And so I phoned Mr. Cummings and told him we had half the money. Told him she was beautiful and wealthy. Well, she uh, is beautiful, isn't she? And with money. What woman isn't? I uh, cut the comedy. At any rate, Cummings went for it in a big way. And believe you me, he's the crank when it comes to associates and surroundings. It really would be something if you knew we were running a red party up there to help us eat. Now look, when Cummings and his daughters arrive, I want you to... It's them. They're here. Cummings and his daughters. The train must have been early. But, but I'll back if she's not here. Well, look, entertain them. Tell them the train was late. Tell them anything. Only do something. your watch where you're going. Now, what do you want? What's the matter with you guys? Here we is getting ready to get a big red party upstairs and you guys don't even show up. Never mind the show up. This is the show down. And maybe you don't know it, but from now on, you're a butler. Butler? That's the same part I get in every show you do. Look, this ain't no show. This is the real thing. Now comb your hair and wash your face and... Hurry back as quick as you can. Five into 42. No, five into 50. That's easy. Let me see, 18, 21. Now, if I kick them out in the street, I'll get nothing. Ah, if I let him stay, uh, I'll get nothing either. There's no use to toss in no coin. I'll lose out either way. Oh, me. Did you tell her to the ride for Central Park? Oh, what a lovely park. This is Harry Diggs, my co-producer. We just finished the rehearsal. I'm very pleased to meet you all. Uh, you're the two charming daughters. And you own Mr. Cummings, who's the crank on the soul. Uh, what's that? Uh, that's one of the lines now you play. You see, we fairly live our part. I say, Jim, this time you spoke of. Uh, where is she? Where is she? Oh, where is she? Uh, Harry, where is she? Uh, Harry, where is she? Oh, she, uh, uh, she's late. I mean, that is, uh, this train was late. Well, uh, let's be comfortable. Won't you take your hats off? I think that's all All right, young man. Let's get on to business. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Won't you try the couch? 
That's exactly what's worrying Jim and me. Till I get my roof red. Our partner, no doubt. I shall greet her. Ah, come right in, my dear. What do you mean, my dear? And who are you? Who is this old crackpot? Who did you expect? Ben Johnson? What is it, Mr. Donald? I want my room rent. Well, you can't expect Mr. Cummings to pay your rent. Listen, you. I've got enough out of you. Either you pay your rent, or out you go. Oh, great. Well played, my good friend. Or you'll be terrific in the park. Is he one of your actors? Oh, yes, Crystal Lee. Gruesome is he? Uh, he's playing the villain in our new play. I'm no villain and I'm no play actor. I'm an honest man and I want my room rent. He's so realistic. He's wonderful. What's the name of your character? I want my room rent. I want my room rent, a good title. And another thing, this rent party business has got to stop. Come on, Jack, come on. Oh, come on, me don't come on. Me me here. Let's go on a bit, boy. Have some fun. Ah, I see you brought the hors d'oeuvres. That'll give us an appetite for dinner. Come on, friend. Get a load of this. Okay. You might have father. Now, what are we going to do? Well, I tell you what, you keep getting the money out of the hat. Maybe if we give them enough food, they'll forget about the partner. I say, Jim, hadn't we better wait until our partner arrives? Oh, no, eat, drink, and be merry. I hope. Explain, explain, explain. 
bar now. You don't have to keep it up for long, but it's our only chance. You've got to help Jim and me. Well, what am I supposed to do? Look, you're supposed to be a Madame Deborah from Paris. You're supposed to be very wealthy and ready to finance our new show. And above all, you've got to be rich. Yeah, but I left my cigars upstairs. Oh. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Madame Deborah from Paris. Oh. Ah, charmed. From Paris? From gay Paris? From gay Paris? From Paris? From hunger? Uh, tell me, madam, on which side are you Parisian or American? Oh, I'm mean a little on both sides. Oh, madam is interested in music, uh, the opera. How interesting. I'm also interested in the opera. You call it opera, I call it burlesque. There's nothing burlesque about the opera I've seen. Then you ain't seen nothing. Now, in the strip tease... Oh, madam, 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 you look a little tired. Perhaps you should refresh yourself. Oh, well, I could use a couple of beers. Come to think of it, I can stand some refreshments myself. My good man, we'll have some beer. Well, I'm gonna get any beer. Don't be so particular. You don't have a bad job in the neighborhood. And as I was saying, a couple of beers. Wait a minute, man, come buy some beer. We're pushing. Come on, Don. Man, want to buy me some beer. Hey, you had to go push it. Come on, Don. Every time we get in the time to get in on a freebie, you got to spoil it. The man was gonna buy some beer. I get it. What kind of guy are you? You know I'm just mean to all of us. I'm through. Is that the way to show your gratitude? When we played Philadelphia, didn't I borrow your last fifty dollars to help us get home? Think of that. Think of it. That's number one on my worry parade. Now we ask you to do us one little favor. They want beer, and you refuse. <laughs> and do you remember the time when I only had a saw bucket? You took that. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> but I forgive you for what money you lend us. I said, if you want beer. Give him the money, Bobby. <laughs> oh, you forgive me if I give him the money for the beer? Yes. <laughs> you is now the financier. Boy, what a girl. You know what to do. Pick yourself up, go to work on Mr. Cummings, and then heal back the show. And you'll be the star. All right, get going while I make myself a lure.
Robert. Madam Deborah. I find out that Madam Deborah is in your room. There's so much I must discuss with her. And I thought maybe you'd take me for a little walk. You have to leave Jimmy to stow alone. But, but... There are no buts, young man. I don't mind you taking Francine for a walk while I'm talking to Madam Deborah. May I call you Francine? Just a minute, dear. I'll be with you in a moment. You buzz it till I get this straight jacket adjusted. You all can come in now. I wonder why you had a written me. We were such good friends in Chicago. Well, the fact is, Cristola. Things just haven't been going so well. I know, so well, I right? know. Things haven't been good for you. Why do you think I persuaded Father to come to me? I realized you needed help. And now that I see what's going on, this room and everything. Well, I'm doing the best I can. I... Of course you are, darling, and I admire you for it. But you know how strict Father is. And if he thought you were bluffing... Yes, I realize that. And that story about your Long Island mansion with flowers and trees, all oh, it sounds romantic. Where is this garden? Oh, there aren't any gardens and there aren't any trees. Just you being around this stuff, baby. You? you were saying, dear madam, uh, <coughs> you don't mind if I smoke, do you? I'd offer you one, but I know ladies don't smoke cigars. Man, oh man. Now, about this man in Paris. Oh, I said to this man, I said, I'm a respectable lady. And I get furious. And I demand to know why this man is in my apartment. And I said, Lollipop, you might if I take a couple of drags off of that cigar. A cigar? A lady? Oh, all the ladies smoke in Paris. That's an old boulevard custom. Ha, 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 yes. Everything goes in Paris. There you are. You know, I think I should get married again. You see, I have two daughters. They should have a mother's protection. Yes, I'm sure I should get married again. Well, I never married because I never found the right woman. But how could you? Who ever heard of anyone marrying a woman? My brother did. <laughs> <laughs> I am Parisian sense of humor. <laughs> Mr. Curtis, remember, I am a lady. Oh, yes, I completely forgot myself. Uh, perhaps we should look for the children. After all, we shouldn't be selfish and think of our happiness only. Well, I know a cool spot out in the backyard. My feet sure could stand a breathing spell. <laughs> ah, how good it is to have a real sigh. Man, if I was to have a real sigh, I'd bust right out of these things. <laughs> Number one, no stairs, this hallway, and positively no bells. Uh, does Harry Diggs live here? Oh, uh, don't tell me he's going to have more company. Well, I am that, that is I, Mrs. Martin. He's got the house pretty well pulled up now, with people from Chicago and a madam from Paris. From Paris? Yes, a Madam Deborah. He gives me a song in advance about letting her use his room. Say she's going to finance his show. Oh, then she is here. She sure is, and it's plenty of her. Well, I'm really not interested in that. I'd like a room for myself. Uh, well, uh, we have but one small room. But tomorrow you may have a large one, because I'm going to throw the whole bunch of them out in the morning. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, you know these people? Well, slightly. But for the present,
present, I don't want them to know that I'm here. It's okay as long as you can pay your rent. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about the rent. That would be a very small item. Uh, now I know you're going to get one of these large rooms. Uh, step right in, Miss Martin. Thank you very much. The rest are on this floor, too. And if they make too much noise, just call me. And don't forget that for the present, I want to remain in Cognito. I don't care what you remain in. It's so you can pay your rent. All these bells. From Gaston I'm glad to meet all of you. Now, what do you want? I am here to see my ooh la la la, Madame de Borat. Right over there in that room there. Uh, here's a room belonging to a Harry Biggs, but she has it for now. Marcel, it is I, Gaston from Paris, <laughs> who brought you across the ocean, who came to America, because I know you are gone. Yes? No. Ah, you cannot fool me, mon chéri. <laughs> she must be out. That is impossible. I just see her come in. You just seen who come in? Ma chérie, Madame de Barat. Ma'am, she's been inside here for hours. You say she's not in. Then you say she is here for hours. I just see her coming. And I'm gonna see you go right out. Wait, I cannot go. I love her too, too much. She's beautiful. She's different. She has eyes. She has ears. She has nose. Ah, yes. She is different. She has eyes, ears, and a nose. That would make her different. Bah. You are what you call stupid. I shall return. But in the meantime, Gaston de l'Equatrium, the museum, to la Pousse Cafe, to la Noto, a poo-poo from Gay Paris, we'll see you later. Yes? I might as well throw them all out now while I'm in the mood. I couldn't help but overhear someone see Madame Deborah. Oh, I'm getting sicker and sicker all the time. Why, that man isn't in love with her eyes and ears and nose. It's her money. Uh, uh, what's that? Well, I know her by reputation from Paris. She's very wealthy, has fools of money. Well, now, uh, that puts new gravy in the frying pan. I'll see about that right now. Uh, oodles of money. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I must say that I'm not altogether impressed with your rear view. How dare you? I was expecting a terrorist. What, all this? And a terrorist, too? And it's atmosphere, Mr. Cummings. You see, well, anybody in my position could have a penthouse and a garden, but, well, I prefer to live the life of my play with my actors. That's yeah. right. Anybody in your position could have all of that, Mr. Walton, and you should, too. Uh, Mr. Cummings was right. By not being impressed, I pleaded with you and Mr. Diggs to take the penthouse when you moved in. No, you prepared to live among the common actors. But that's not going to do any longer. I'm going to fix this garden right here and now. But Mr. Donaldson, I mean, I... No buts. Music should be in there and we'll have a garden party to celebrate in tonight. I'm going to fix it all myself. Because I won't dare imagine Deborah to have every cup. Now, you people go upstairs. And I'll take care of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to fix it all myself. Uh-huh. Ah, but then I follow myself. I ring the bell. Aha. Uh -huh. She's not there. And yet she is there for hours. Wait, 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 wait. There is the house. Right across the street. Now then, how can she be in and out? And yet the out so she's already in. Wait, 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 wait. What's this on
I'll him bell. Hey, you! Why don't you answer that bell? Got to do this thing all by myself. All the time, all by myself. Just when I'm getting the yard cleaned up for Madam Deborah. <laughs> Aha, I am back. Aha, the fix is Mrs. Christmas. She is in. No, there's the room. You who? Uh, my it is I. The Gaston de la Quatrième, de la Douzième, de la Fouze Café, de la Nonto, à tout de Paris, yes? I guess she's gone out. You are what you call the one grand nuisance. You know too much about my sherry. She's not your sherry. She's my sherry. Aha. Uh -huh. Then you are compromised. Now I understand you, pig of a janitor. If I hear another one of those cracks out of you, I'm going to let loose. Poo poo to you. Poo poo to you, you old buddy. Now, 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 Morning to steal my darling, my Shetty, my dear Matt and Deborah. Oh, me, oh, my, oh, God. I can't stand this wear and tear. Oh, darling, gee. Well, it must be that I'm just nowhere. Oh, no, no, no. me 99 cents in a dime store. <laughs> you, of course, had lots of love affairs in Paris. Love affairs? Child, I can remember when the object sex used to chase me all over the boulevard. They really did? Well, not exactly, but I like to talk about it. <laughs> you know, I find men so interesting, don't you? Well, I never cared for men. Oh, that is only a few, a very select few. Why, a lovely woman like you should have no difficulty. Uh, child, I got to smoke. Just got to smoke. It's my nerves. Well, dear me, I don't think that I have a cigarette in the place. Cigarette? I don't smoke no cigarette. These years, what I smoke. A cigar? Now tell me. Yeah, all the ladies in the past smoke. It's no boulevard custom. Oh, really? Uh, perhaps I should try one. Yeah? Go right ahead, child. Enjoy yourself. I might as well try everything they do in Paris. Life. My, my, what a delight. 
delightful walk. Now I'll really be able to enjoy that big dinner I spoke about. Oh, just make yourself comfortable, sir. Harry and I will be with you in just a second. Won't you work? Uh, <laughs> Harry, we've got to find Bumps. Imagine Mr. Cummings wanting to marry him. And what about that dinner he's supposed to be I don't know anything about it. Now, what do you suppose he's done? Do you think he... Do you suppose oh, he's... Stop the double talk. This is serious. And I had to walk all the way home in a stocking feet. <laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> What's going on here? Just an old boulevard custom, boys. Just an old boulevard custom. Ah, uh, between these steps and those bells, I'm never going to be able to finish this picture. Oh, me. Hey, you people up here on this floor. This is Donaldson, your landlord. You ain't seen me in a long time, because you've been too busy dodging me. But I'm not here after the rest. I have a proposition. All actors will get a week's rent free. You have to entertain in my garden party tonight. While you're entertaining in the rent party, I'm staging a party for Madame Deborah. And I'll throw in uh, 10 bucks. Uh, 10 bucks, I said, for the refreshment to close the deal. Well, I told you last trip, you guys just don't seem to understand. I owe you a new mother. You're growing up. You need someone to guide you. But, Father, my ideas are different. So am I. We're the ones who should marry. Then we could build a home and look after you. Nonsense. You're both too young. Why, when I was your age... Times have changed, Father. Besides, we're both old enough to know what we're doing. I'll not hear of it. Why, it's, it's absurd. It's... It, oh, jeez. Now, when the time comes... I have two nice gems picked out for you in Chicago. But all hearts are here, Father. Uh, who are the two scoundrels? They're not scoundrels. They're nice. And they're trying hard. That means everything. But who are they? Oh, Harry and Jim. Harry and Jim? But you don't know them. After all, you only met them in a business way. Jim and I got to know each other pretty well when he was in Chicago. And I feel as though I've known Harry all of my life. Please listen to us, Father. I know the boys in this group. But you should know them better. Have you forgotten you just met Madame Deborah? It might be a good idea to consult her about the matter. You know, she's one of the interested parties. When I make a decision, it's, it's final. And I've definitely made up my mind to marry her. And what about us? Yes, Father, what about us? If she approves, then you both shall marry. Ah, my dear children, tonight shall be a night of nights. It'll be the one great moment in my life when I announce my engagement to the charming and lovable Madame Deborah. Wow! <laughs> My patience is what you call exhausted. No longer can I wait. Wait, 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 wait. Tonight, I know Raphael Vido, yes? I what you call need him. Then I find her. I take her in my arms. And then? And then? And then? then then I announce my engagement to the lovely and charming Madame de Bora. Mm. Wow! Here I am, I think I'll get limbered up before I see my charming Madame Deborah. Take it, Professor. <laughs> She is. Tonight I'm announcing my engagement to charming Madame Deborah. Wow. Them mice! 
tenements, eat, drink, and be merry, let your joy be unrefined. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to introduce the daughter of my dear friend, uh, Christola. I haven't rehearsed it. I mean your song. The king of Heidi Ho one day called out his band to play. And when the band began to swing, the king began to sing. He said, Reba. occasion to announce my engagement. But I'm announcing my engagement. But my engagement means everything to me. It means bigger and better apartment houses in Harlem. And my engagement means everything to me. It means a bigger and better family, where I'll be the happiest man in Chicago. Your fellas got so many engagements, why don't you leave? Not until I inform you of my great love, my dear Madam Deborah. And not until I inform you of my great love, my dear Madam Deborah. Call me. Father, please, not now. Wait until the entertainment is over. Crystal is right, Father. Now is not the time. Very well. But I can hardly wait. Just ain't fair. Just ain't fair. Gentlemen, the entertainment up to this point has been a bit on the jive side. Now we shall go to the sublime. My little protege next door. A wonderful little protege, you say. She plays a wonderful piano. And speaking of piano, you say, they used to call me Old Haney. Come along, my dear. Del Ah. Del
Would you all care to go upstairs and see how the rehearsal's coming on? You might have a pleasure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now all we have to do is hope and pray. By the way, uh, what did you say the name of that show on the rehearsing upstairs? It's called the Red Party. Red Party. Hmm, that's an unusual name. There's nothing unusual about that. That goes on every night in Harlem. And I guess you all know it's the custom. When you go upstairs to the rehearsal, you drop in a little donation. I uh, see another Paris custom. No, honey, Harlem custom. Strictly Harlem custom. Well, uh, how about the uh, ten dollars? Why, that's a pack of donations. I'll make it 20. Come on, lollipop, let's go before I lose all my indiscretion. Boy, what is it? Dear, your father's dead wrong. How can he marry that? It's the only way he'll permit our marriage. He leaves it all to Madam Deborah, and he's determined to marry her. But it's out of the question. I... Evidently, you're not concerned about our marriage. If you stop Madam Deborah, you stop us. I know, but there must be something we can Why do. Why are you so worried about her? I thought I was the only one on your mind. Oh, you know you are, darling. It's only that I... Excuse me, but uh, if you two lovebirds would break it up for a minute, uh, we'd like to get a word in. Yes, we decided to make it a double way. Wow. Well, that looks like it leaves it up to us. We'll put it up to your father's right now. And I want you to do the same for me in one of my pictures. Will do. Dollar. Got it. Shut up, man. Ah, uh, yes. The donation. That's right. Yes, my friend. <laughs> what a sucker I am. Right in my own house. What a woman can do to me. Just make yourself at home, my dear. You've got a surprise in store for you. I hope my Madam Deborah won't be long. Your Madam Deborah? Why, of course, my Madam Deborah. I'm going to marry her. That's what you think. I'm the one she's like. To now look at you. No, I'm I... I... I ought 
ought to try, but why should I? It's misery. If you don't want me, it's up to you. I'll just have to look around for somebody new, cause I refuse. I shall wait. Her form, her personality, she is beautiful. Ah, sacre bleu, mon dieu, mon dieu. Come on, now, let's have fun down the street. Let's have some fun. Let's carry it down the street now. Ma chérie, it is at last that we meet again, no? You better stay out of my way now. Come to the dinner and get mad. Right. I'll have the law on you. This is the last insult. She will not listen. I shall do this my own way. Why, madam, what a costume for a party. Child, I got to go someplace. I, I, I got to relieve my feet. I'm dead. Oh, you poor dear. It wasn't necessary for you to dress like this to entertain us at the party. Come in my room and refresh yourself. I found you. You know, you're much too nice a person to go to all this trouble. I don't think I'm so nice. I guess I hurt the boys with Mr. Cummings, and I feel badly about it. You tried, and that's all that I want to know. Now, I'm going downstairs to the garden and talk to Mr. Cummings. You rest yourself. I rest. Everything is going wrong. Ever since I've been here. And so after all this, I'm through. We leave tomorrow morning for Chicago. But, sir, I'm sorry. I did the best I could to make your visit cheerful. Cheerful? 
You introduce me to Madame Detra, I want to marry her, then I find out that every man in the whole building is being lured by her charms. Do you call that cheerful? It isn't Jim's fault because you were fascinated by Madame Debra. After all, we did come to New York on business only, as you said. You're right. It was on business only. But now, there'll be no love affairs, and there'll be no business. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it looks like I made a mess of the whole thing. Oh, I'm not blaming you. It just wasn't meant to be, that's all. Oh, I should have told you everything in the beginning. But, but then you must have known I was broke. I did know it. And still I admired the way you tried to keep up your courage. Today's been a big day in my life. I'll never forget it. Stop. Well, there's nothing I can do. I mean, I've done all I could. What are you two kids looking so gloomy about with so much excitement? And that's just the trouble. There's too much excitement. Oh, when you're in love, nothing else matters. It's not doing us any good. Father's taking his soul and me home tomorrow. But he knows you intend to marry. Yes, but since he's lost that Madame Deborah, he's taking it out on us. Well, what do you intend doing about it? Well, there's nothing I can do. I'm broke. Francine knows it. Pretty soon, the whole world can know it as far as I'm concerned. Well, now, I wouldn't exactly say that. You know, when you're in love, you're wealthy. Didn't you know that? Francine, where's your father? I'd like to go and have a little talk with him. Sitting over there sulking like a baby. Well, cheer up, you two. I'll see you later. I take it you're enjoying the entertainment, Mr. Cummings. Why, uh, quite so, Miss... Uh... Uh, Martin, just plain, everyday Martin. I don't seem to remember you. Why, I've been around all day, but then, of course, you were so busy with Madame Deborah. I never want to hear that name again. And because of that, you want to spoil your two daughters' happiness? Well, I'm no longer interested in love affairs. Would you mind if I watch the evening's entertainment with you? Why, I'd be delighted. <laughs> Just in case you change your mind Though it takes a year or more I'll be hanging round your door Just in case you change your mind For you told me in advance that you would never leave me But not knowing positively Well, I thought I'd take a chance And now, now I'm trying my best to last But I'm blue as can be
your door And I'll go mob, mob like I did before Baby, just in case you change your mind I'll still be around, gal, don't you? Just in case, just in case you change your mind Oui, oui. Oui, oui. I shall wait for you at the cafe. Ah, tonight she shall be mine. Oui, oui. They call the grand exercise. You no? are telling me. Oh, my darling, my beloved Madame de Bora, at last you are mine. I will wait not one minute longer. I will take this cover from you, and I will kiss your eyes, and then your lips, and then your arms. Ah, but first, I will kiss your lips. Uh, monsieur, she is uh, the Madame uh, Deborah. Idiot! This is an old hag. Who called me an old hag? This is not Madame Deborah. This, this is a hippopotamus. I don't know what that last crap means, but what I think it is, me and you gonna fight. Oh, I'll stop the blood, dear, dear. First, I will kill you two. And then I will carve this stuff. If you do, you'll have to have a knife a mile long. Why, it's Miss Handkerchief. She, she's been doped. I knew it was you. 
there goes my oodles of money. Well, she couldn't have gone far. She was only in a ballet costume. Well, let's go find Well, of course, let's go find her. Oh, no. <laughs> To my singing. Frere Jacques, adorez vous. Frere Jacques, adorez vous. Oh, monsieur, you will see me no more. Allow me to tie me up. Please, monsieur, no more. No more. <laughs> I owe my life to you. If there's ever anything I can do... Why, you can let him marry Crisola. And you can let me marry Harry. What do you say, Father? Please? Well, <laughs> I suppose I should. But one thing, there'll be no rehearsing shows in your own home when you're married. Uh, especially rent party shows? <laughs> <laughs> you know, young people should get married. You're so right. Yeah, I feel kind of lonesome myself. And any woman who has a crazy Frenchman chasing after her with a knife should have some protection. Why, Mr. Cummings? You know, I'm glad I'm through with that, Madam Deborah. Oh, but you're not. You're just beginning to. I don't get it. Well, you see, I am Madam Deborah. No. You? Madam Deborah? Well, I wanted to surprise you. That's why I sent that wire saying that I couldn't come. But after I got here and found out what was happening, it was just too good to be missed, believe me. Well, now. <laughs> well, I read it back to the boys. And you can count me in for my 50 percent. Well, what do you say? Let's, let's put it in a joint account for the kids and for you and me. Oh, Mr. Cummings. 